what we've done is take something that existed and apply it in a new place. Um, and I'm going to quote the, um, the, the, the home hero, <laughs> Roger Martin, who wrote this book, Getting Beyond Better. Um, and in the book, this is one of the phenomena that they, he and Sally Osberg, who wrote the book with, um, they reference, which is the social entrepreneur or enterprise creates a methodology that at no greater cost causes a key asset already in hand to generate more value. And I think that's a really nice summary of what Root Capital has done, which is there was a thing that existed, but it wasn't being used to benefit the rural poor. And so we thought, maybe we'll give it a shot. And it looks like this, right? Which is we have a sort of five-part process for lending money out and getting it back in a no, low-resource, no-collateral environment. So the insight that led to the creation of Root Capital was these businesses don't have hard collateral. They don't own anything, right? They own that warehouse, but you, I mean, what are you going to do with it, right? Um, but they have something very valuable, which is that somebody wants to buy their product, right? They have a purchase contract. They have an intent to buy, and they have a future cash flow, right? And so we said, aha, we could lend against that cash flow as if it were collateral, Right? We'll underwrite the relationship between the bank, between the business and the buyer, and we'll just we'll lend there. It makes total sense. And so we sort of got that more or less going right away in about 1999, 2000, and it's largely stayed the same since then. Like the innovation hasn't changed. The sort of back office, you know, how you monitor it, how you monitor risk, that's become much, much more sophisticated, but the basic underlying premise um, has been the same. The, this is supposed to be the business, the money, the, the dollar bill. So Starbucks, whoever, Twin Trading, whoever you want, Whole Foods, they order the goods. They say, I need three containers worth of coffee or soybeans or whatever it is, acai berries, right? Here's $100,000, basically here's a contract for $100,000 worth of your product. Then the business says, okay, that's valuable. They turn around to Root Capital and they say, lend against this contract. And we lend against it at a discount, 60 or 70%, the loan to value ratio, right? We don't lend full out. We want a little bit of a buffer there in case things change, um, but we lend them. And so they get cash on the barrel head immediately for the time of harvest. And this is the crux of this whole thing, is if you're an agricultural business, very isolated, you know, at the end of the dirt road, and at the time of the harvest, people are, your members, your producer members are coming down the hillside, you know, four hours on foot with a big sack of coffee on their back, or maybe they're lucky enough to have a donkey, you don't want to say, I owe you, right? Because what happens if someone says, I owe you? They say, no, you don't because I'm going to sell it to the middleman who's standing right here. And he's going to buy it from me at a fraction of its value, but at least he's going to give me cash on the barrel head. Right? And then the whole proposition of fair trade and organic and all of this sort of willingness of consumers to pay more to have ethically sourced um, goods, it all falls apart because they don't have money to buy the product at the time of the harvest, and that's unacceptable.